welcome back to this next video and this is the uh, part two on the gene therapy uh, in the uh, first part of the uh, video we talked about the uh, therapy in general and uh, we talked about the uh, two types of therapies that is the plant-based therapies and the antibiotics uh, and in this video we are going to talk about the uh, gene therapy so uh, what is a gene then uh, genes, uh, they are the sequences of the nucleotides that are carried on a chromosome and they are the uh, basic units of heredity. Uh, and uh, if you remember the central dogma, what the central dogma says is that the uh, DNA is converted into the RNA and the RNA that is converted into the proteins. And if you talk about the specific RNA, that means that the messenger RNA that is converted into the proteins. So what they simply mean is that the uh, genes, they are uh, responsible uh, for making uh, functional proteins. And it is these functional proteins uh, which carry out most of the uh, life functions. And that these proteins, they are acting as enzymes in your body. Uh, they are acting as structural component in your body. They are working as uh, signaling molecules in the body. That means that these proteins, they are carrying out uh, uh, major functions in the uh, in the life of a particular individual. Now, as these genes, they are responsible for making these uh, proteins. So when there is a mutation in the gene, that means you have got uh, a different gene than the wild one. That means that this mutated gene is going to uh, cause a change in the codon. And when there is a change in the codon, that is going to change the amino acid sequence. And when the amino acid that is changed, that means that there will be a change in the uh, conformation of the protein. And if there is a change in the conformation of the protein, uh, that is going to affect the function of that particular protein, usually causing a genetic disorder. So what they simply mean is that when there is a mutation in the gene, that is going to code for a non-functional kind of the protein, an abnormal kind of the protein, which actually causes the genetic disorder. This means that the problem lies in the genes. So for if there is a problem in the gene, you need therapy for the gene. So gene therapy is the use of the DNA as a drug to treat diseases by delivering therapeutic DNA into the patient cell. Now compare this with the other two types of the therapies that we, that we discussed in the uh, first part of this video, uh, the plant-based therapies or the uh, antibiotics. Uh, in those particular cases, we are actually entering some kind of the uh, active compounds into the body for the treatment of a particular condition or a particular disease condition. Uh, but in case of the gene therapy, we are actually deriving, uh, delivering the uh, therapeutic DNA into the patient cell and it is actually this therapeutic DNA which is, uh, which is having a therapeutic effect uh, on this particular patient. If I give you an uh, overview of the gene therapy, we'll be discussing each and everything in detail, but if I give you an overview of this, uh, what happens in the gene therapy is that uh, there is a patient with a mutated gene and his, uh, he, is, he or she is having uh, symptoms of that particular disease. So what you do is that you are going to insert a normal copy of the gene. Uh, you have to insert a normal copy of the gene into the vector and this vector is used as a delivery uh, to deliver this normal copy of the gene into the patient cell and when you deliver a normal copy of the gene uh, that means that the function of that particular gene will be restored and that is going to produce the therapeutic protein and hence the possible treatment so this is an overview of the uh, gene therapy that you are replacing a mutated gene uh, with a normal copy of that particular gene you are producing a normal uh, protein uh, in this in this particular case a therapeutic protein and hence the uh, possible treatment of that particular disease now why gene therapy if you talk about the uh, genetic disorders they are the uh, diseases uh, which are almost impossible to cure uh, at the start of the uh, 20th century why the uh, genetic diseases are so difficult to treat this is just one of the example uh, if you talk about the sickle cell anemia uh, the sickle cell anemia is actually uh, uh, the uh, a disease in which the uh, shape of the red blood cell that changes from the normal form this is the normal form of the uh, red blood cell into sickle form if you can see this one so if you compare the shape of the normal red blood cell 
to this to that of a sickle cell they are very much different from each other in this particular form in the normal form the red blood cell they are very active in delivering the uh, oxygen into the blood uh, into the different parts of the body but when the shape of the red blood cell that is converted into the sickle shape uh, its oxygen carrying capacity is uh, reduced very much and when the uh, oxygen carrying capacity of the red blood cell that is reduced that is uh, in most of the cases a fatal condition now this sickle cell anemia it was discovered in 1910 that means uh, like uh, 110 years uh, from now and the only uh, therapeutic option that is available these days is to uh, give the blood transfusion to these patients the only treatment that is available so far for the uh, sickle cell anemia mm -hmm. that means that in 110 years we are still not able to uh, treat the sickle cell anemia the way it should be treated uh, the reason is that sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder it is actually a, a recessive autosomal disorder that means that the uh, genes that it's present on the autosomal chromosome and both the copies of the uh, saved gene uh, they are uh, defective they are non-functional if you talk about the uh, human hemoglobin that actually consists of two alpha and two beta genes and in case of the second cell anemia the gene defect is present in the uh, beta globin gene and in this particular uh, gene defect or in this particular mutation only a single nucleotide is changed from a to t if you look at this one this is the uh, normal sequence of the dna this is gag and when there is mutation this gag it changes to gtg so you are only changing one nucleotide instead of a you are actually having this uh, T and this single mutation is going to change a single codon in the messenger RNA like in this particular case if you uh, transcribe this you'll be having the GAG as the uh, codon and in this particular case you'll be having the GUG as the codon in normal condition at position number six there is a glutamic acid but because of the mutation in the uh, in the second cell anemia condition uh, this glutamic acid changes to valine because of the change in the codon so a single nucleotide change at position number six is changing a single amino acid from glutamic acid to uh, valine and this single mutation is actually causing this fatal condition known as the uh, sickle cell anemia so this is just one of the example how the uh, uh, genetic disorders they are very much uh, difficult to treat now the normal hemoglobin is actually represented by the HBA and the sickle cell uh, hemoglobin is actually represented by this S and this is S actually refers to the uh, uh, sickle shape of the red blood cell so 110 years we are still not uh, yet able to treat the sickle cell anemia in an effective way making the genetic diseases very difficult to treat so the uh, option that is available to treat these genetic diseases they are the uh, that is the gene therapy and the first case of the gene therapy uh, the first experiment of the gene therapy that was performed uh, in september uh, 14 1990 uh, uh, of a patient uh, her name was the uh, ashanti de silva and this is the picture of the ashanti de silva uh, she was the uh, first patient uh, to get an uh, gene therapy treatment now Ashanti de Silva she was treated for the uh, for a particular uh, disease known as the uh, adenosine deaminase severe combined immunodeficiency now that is a very big name uh, but you will get the uh, concept in a while so she was treated for the ADA skit in 1990 during the procedure what the doctors did that they removed her white blood cells they insert the missing gene into the WBC in this particular case the adenosine deaminase gene they inserted the uh, normal copy of this particular gene into her white blood cells and they put them back into her bloodstream so her cells was uh, you can say genetically modified with a normal copy of the adenosine deaminase gene and they were put back into her bloodstream this particular uh, treatment strengthened her immune system but it only worked for a few months so that gives the uh, that give a hope to the uh, scientists that uh, if it can work for a few months that means you can make them work for a longer period of time now what is adenosine deaminase deficiency severe combined immunodeficiency 
Adenosine deaminase deficiency, uh, this particular part of the disease, which is known as the adenosine deaminase deficiency, uh, it is actually an autosomal recessive disorder. We will come to that in a while. That causes immunodeficiency. You need to understand this term severe combined immunodeficiency. What is the severe combined immunodeficiency? Now, this severe combined immunodeficiency, for short, known as the SCID, uh, it is a rare genetic disorder characterized by the disturbed development of the functional T and B sets. Uh, these are the two major pillars of your adaptive system, of your adaptive immune system, the T and the B cells. And in case of the uh, severe combined immunodeficiency, both of these cells, the B and the T cells, they are impaired. Uh, why we call them is uh, severe and combined. Combined in the sense that both the B and the T cells, so you are combining the T and the B cells, both of them they are compromised, they are impaired, therefore we use this term combined. And severe in the sense that both of these pillars they are non-functional, therefore that is causing a severe immunodeficiency. So this severe combined immunodeficiency is actually causing the uh, impaired T and B cell system, therefore causing a severe immunodeficiency. Uh, if you talk specifically about the ADA skid, this uh, adenosine deaminase deficiency is also a skid. That means in the ADA, both of the T and the B cells, they are impaired. So this adenosine deaminase deficiency, the severe combined immunodeficiency, the ADA skid, uh, if you talk about uh, its percentage, it is um, it causes about 15% of all the cases of the skids and only 3% of the children, they are born with this particular gene. And it, uh, it occurs in fewer than 1 in um, uh, 100,000 live births worldwide. So this means that if there is a mutation, if there is a deficiency of the uh, adenosine deaminase in the body, there will be a skid condition. Now what does um, adenosine deaminase enzyme do? Now this adenosine deaminase gene, uh, it actually produces an enzyme known as the adenosine deaminase. Now this enzyme is found throughout the body, but it is most active in uh, specialized white blood cells called the lymphocytes. And it is actually these uh, lymphocytes which provide immunity to your body. Now these lymphocytes, they protect your body against potentially harmful invaders, there's the bacteria and the viruses, by making immune cells called the antibodies. So these antibodies, they will be produced by the B cells or by directly attacking the infected cell. So you are talking about the T cells now. So in this particular, these lymphocytes, they are producing the antibodies by the B cells. They are directly attacking the infected cells in the T cells. Now the function of this uh, adenosine deaminase enzyme is to eliminate a molecule called uh, deoxyadenosine, which is generated when the DNA is broken down. So when you are breaking down the DNA, uh, a byproduct of that broke down uh, is known as the uh, deoxyadenosine. Now this deoxyadenosine, it is very toxic to these B and T cells. So what the adenosine deaminase enzyme do is that it converts this deoxyadenosine, which I told you is toxic to the lymphocyte, to another molecule called deoxyanosine, which is not harmful. So that means a functional adenosine deaminase enzyme remove a toxic molecules from your body and convert that into a non-toxic molecule. Now when there is mutation in the gene, that simply means that uh, the toxic adenosine that is going to build up in the cell because you cannot convert that into the uh, non-harmful substance, the, the, the uh, deoxyanosine, and if you are not able to convert that into the deoxyanosine, this toxic compound is going to, uh, uh, is going to uh, you can say, build up in the cell. And this toxic deoxyadenosine, uh, it is uh, very toxic to the immature lymphocytes. And when these Im uh, immature lymphocytes, uh, they, uh, there is accumulation of these deoxyadenosine, these immature lymphocytes, they die before they can mature to help fight infections. And actually this the buildup of the deoxyadenosine is going to kill these immature lymphocytes. There will be a low level of the B and the T cell in your body. That means that the uh, body will be having a condition of the skid, uh, a very low kind of the immunity. 
Uh, this is a journal about the gene. That the ADE gene is located on the long arm of the chromosome number 20 uh, at, the at the band position number 13.12, and it is having uh, 32,216 base pair exactly. Now, when there is mutation in the ADE gene, more than 70 mutations has been identified, and there are different kind of mutations that have been reported in the ADE gene, causing the skid in the body. Uh, some of the mutations they are the missense mutation uh, and you all know that this missense mutation it actually results in the substitution of one amino acid for another amino acid and in some cases the mutation is uh, the nonsense in nature that means that this kind of the mutation uh, is going to produce the uh, is going to uh, stop the production of the protein at all or it is going to make uh, an unstable kind of the protein. So in both of the cases, whether you talk about the missense mutation or the nonsense mutation, the, there is a non-functional deoxyadenosine enzyme causing the buildup of the deoxyadenosine which stops it to the cells. Uh, if you talk about the, uh, as we are talking about the genetic disease, so if you talk about the genetics of the ADA skid, it is autosomal uh, recessive in nature. What the autosomal mean is that the uh, gene for the, that this particular gene is located on the autosomal chromosome, in this particular case on the chromosome number 20. A recessive mean that both of the copies of the gene that will be defective. So the patient is inheriting, uh, inheriting uh, one copy, one defective copy from each of the parent. So the parents of the individual with an autosomal recessive disorder, they both carry one copy of the defective gene. So, so the patient is getting one copy from the mother, one defective copy from the mother, one defective copy from the father. So the mother and the father, they are okay, but the, uh, the, but the patient receiving it, it actually developed the ADA skit condition. Now, if you talk about the uh, earlier experiments of the uh, gene therapy, the early, earlier clinical failures, that led to dismiss a gene therapy as an overhyped uh, uh, experiment or as an overhyped treatment because at the start most of the gene therapy experiment that failed uh, but uh, clinical successes since 2006 uh, they have created a new optimism in the promise of the gene therapy now these include a successful treatment of the patient with uh, retinal diseases the extinct skid the hemophilia and the uh, parkinson disease uh, and uh, Currently, uh, most of the gene therapy trials or the experiments, they are focusing on those particular conditions which are caused by mutation in a single gene because uh, treating a, a single gene is very easy as compared to uh, treating the uh, multiple genes. This is just an example of the success case of the uh, gene therapy. Now, in 2012, uh, Galebra, that is a trade name, that become the uh, first gene therapy treatment to be approved for clinical use. And this Galebra is actually a gene therapy tra treatment for the lipoprotein lipase deficiency. And when there is lipoprotein li lipase deficiency, this actually causes uh, a condition known as the uh, uh, pancreatitis. Now this lipoprotein lipase, it is actually a member of the lipase gene family. Uh, and uh, what it do is that it hydrolyzes the triglycerides in the lipoproteins such as those found in the uh, VLDL into two free fatty acids and monoacyl glycerol. And it also uh, promotes the cellular uptake of the chiromicron remnants, the cholesterol rich lipoproteins and free fatty acids. So this means that this particular enzyme have got important functions in the body. So they are they are important in the production of the in the uptake of the free fatty acid, the uh, rich lipoproteins, the uh, chylomicron remnants. Therefore, having important functions in the body. And this LPL is more widely distributed uh, in the uh, adipose, in the heart, and the skeletal muscle, as well as in the uh, uh, lactating mammary glands. The problem is that Galebra is going to cost you around uh, 1.6 million dollar uh, which make it one of the most uh, expensive medicine in the world. So uh, we will uh, continue the uh, discussion in the next video.